What's up, Survivor fans? This is the IMDb Live Survivor After Show, and I'm your host, Chelsea Walker, from Season 39, Island of the Idols. As I always say, you probably don't recognize who I am because I got voted out so early and I didn't even make the merge. But joining me today are some people who did make the jury. Let's welcome all in. Joining me once again is three-time player Kelly Wentworth. Welcome, Kelly. Hey, Kelly, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you for coming back once again. Of course. We also have Jay Starrett from Millennial Whoa. First Gen X. Mm -hmm. And you also can most recently watch him on MTV's The Challenge. Congratulations on switching networks, Jay. <sighs> thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate it. It's all my fans out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to spoil what happened to you on the challenge, but everyone should definitely tune in because Jay is a beast. I got a concussion. Spoiled. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no cursing, everyone. Okay, and last but not least, we have the one and only Dean Kowalski, the man who was my showman's that wasn't a showman's. Welcome, DK Chillin. Hello. How are you, Chelsea? Hailing all the way from New Jersey, right? I see a bunch of trophies in your background. Oh, yes. You have me in my childhood room. Um, I moved out of the epicenter of the coronavirus of New York City, and I'm camping out with my parents here. So all my trophies, all my hats. You guys are here where the magic happens. All right, Dean, thanks for uh, showing off and bragging about all your trophies. So <laughs> everyone else, you know, thanks for joining us. We're streaming live on YouTube and Twitter. Be sure to follow along using the hashtag IMDBLive. Tweet us your questions. We'll try to get that to them throughout the show. You know, we're remote people, so bear with us. We're going to have some fun and let's get right into it, everyone. So last night we watched the three hour finale and the one and only Tony Vlachos won the game becoming the second two-time winner of Survivor. What do you guys think? Kelly, start us off. Were you surprised? I never thought I'd see a day where Tony Vlachos would win Winners at War. I can't believe the man didn't get a single vote. He was incredible all season long. Dare I say one of the greatest winners of all time Ooh, now. Um, incredible gameplay. So I was super pumped to see Tony win. One of the greatest or the greatest? I think and I don't know. That's tough. I don't know. I, I can't. It, it's the day after. I'm still jacked up on the episode. I can't say the best at this point, but definitely up there for sure. Jay, what are your thoughts? I disagree with Kelly 100%. He's the greatest winner to ever play. Like, he didn't get one vote. He beat all the winners. That's it. Hands down. You beat all of them. And you didn't get one vote? You didn't get one vote? That's Not insane. one vote against him. I'm, I'm with Jay. I mean, I think ever since the final seven, he was on my mind as like the top guy. And especially going into the finale, I was like, if Tony doesn't win this, this game is rigged. And I'm <laughs> like myself and all my affiliation to it. So I'm very, very glad he won. And I must say, I'm super glad that New Jersey represented because the final three were all where I am currently. That's know. actually an amazing point you bring up, Dean, about the final three, all being from New Jersey. I'm also from New Jersey, one of the greatest states. There's actually like a really funny tweet I saw on the internet yesterday, like the NJ, at NJ, oh, there it is. Yeah. There you go. So they actually said what, Jersey, Jersey strong or, yeah. Big state <laughs> energy, big state big, energy. Yes, exactly. Big state energy. <laughs> Jersey represent everyone. Um, some hot takes about Tony. These are some facts I found online yesterday. You know, I think I have to uh, credit Rob's fact checker. One, he was the biggest threat of all time, had his name written down zero times, which still blows my mind. He had four immunities. The record is five in one season. He uh, won fire, making it close against his closest ally. Um, he's just a real gem, that Tony. Um, I want to take a look back before we get into the season as a whole. For those that don't know, we did an IMDb Live Survivor After Show back in February for the premiere, and all four of us made some winner predictions about who we thought would win this season. Let's see if any of us were correct. We all made some winner predictions. Do you guys think I'm going to choose Adam? Yes. No, no, no I don't. I really thought I would choose Adam. Yeah. No, I don't. I'm going to go with my friends. other friend. Eh, hey, Adam, sorry. Oh, Bob. Michelle. Yeah. Okay, well, why? I, because yeah. she's flying under the radar. She's not a huge, like, massive challenge threat, even though she is good at challenges. She's super quiet and laid back and, like, knows how to just shut up when it's important. You know who's going to win? That. Oh! oh! 
<laughs> Adam Klein. The Adam Klein. <laughs> I feel like he's under the radar enough compared to some of these big threats, the names that were thrown around. He's getting lost already. And he's smart enough to make something happen. My winner pick is Denise. Oh! I think Denise is an underrated winner. She went to every tribal council. She That's didn't so have crazy. idols. Like, she just used her own um, relationships and she just was amazing. So I'm, I'm team Denise all day. Yeah. We're going yes. with Not a good first story. You know, I kind of look at Edgic a little bit. I don't know if you guys know what that is. You kind of look, you read into the edit a little bit. Oh, Rin, I made this before I watched this episode, but this episode kind of verified my claim. How so? We saw a lot of him today. Yes, there was yes. a lot of Ben. There was. There was. All right, guys, if there's one thing I can take away from that is I'm very annoying with all the, oh, um, I will try not to do that this time around. But unfortunately, none of us were correct. But I will say three of us guessed people in the final six it was. So good job to us. Uh, where's our trophy? Mm -hmm. uh, it will be printed out to you shortly. Um, before we keep going, we have a couple shout outs. We have Aiden Ruziki. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. He's a very excited. Gavin Gregg says, I watched the finale last night and I cried a few times. I cried myself. Did anyone else cry? I cried. Kelly Maybe cried. Because I, I felt the pain from the edge of ex extinction people. So I feel like I was uh, going back in time. So That must be so miserable, honestly. Ugh. One thing I wanted to talk about, again, before we get into the gameplay, can we just talk about that finale as a whole? You know, Jeff's setup, I don't know if you guys saw, he had like an Instagram post and they also showed it in the very intro. Like the way Survivor just, you know, went all out for this, they had crates shipped to Jeff's house. That was uh, pretty impressive there. Oh, there we go. We have a, a quick look at it. You can see just in his garage. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if he was in LA. Was he in Hawaii? I was staring at the palm trees um, in a different shot. Um, but yeah, he really went all out for this. Um, I really appreciate that. You guys can actually see how my own set looks right now. It's a little janky, but you know what? You guys just gotta, we gotta make things work. So props to Survivor. There we go. <laughs> that, that's what I'm dealing with right now, everyone. My roommate is not happy with me. I took out the spare bedroom. But again, let's get into the show. Enough about me. You know, so we had Michelle and Natalie in the final three. What do you guys think? Any thoughts? Natalie coming back, Michelle? Yo, I literally called Natalie last night. It was midnight my time, like 2.30 a.m. her time. And I blew. I was like, congratulations, you came back. That's so sick. I was so hyped for her because... She almost blew that challenge, tangling herself. I had to do that challenge myself for the family visit, like going through the tangled like pole thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, she's screwed. She's done. She's done. But she came back. I actually want to talk about that challenge because Kelly, you have some experience on the edge of extinction. And I believe that was the same exact challenge that you guys did to come back. Is that correct? It was the same challenge. Yes, it was. Yeah. So, like, do you have any thoughts about that? Because Natalie, she had three advantages in that. And again, she completely earned those. But that was, she had to skip so much. I mean, I personally like challenges where, you know, there's an even playing field. Um, what did you think about this? Well, there's a lot to say here because, you know, I have thoughts on her having the three advantages and some of the other people not even having a chance at an advantage, which is a different conversation completely talking about edge of extinction but i think if she didn't have those advantages she would not have won because there were people that caught up to her and she was stuck on that one part of the challenge for a very long time one thing i want to say about natalie though before i forget i think that this was actually best case for her like going to edge of extinction and coming back it really showcased her skills as a survivor player and I think that if she was in the game, we wouldn't have seen the same Natalie. Like, she is a good player, but I think this really showcased her in a cool, special way. So I'm, I'm kind of happy that this is how her journey was on this season. What did you think about, and anyone feel free to chime in here, um, what did you think about Edge in general this season? You know, did it seem harder? Did it seem more difficult? I know there was fire tokens involved, but, like, the Kelly, I'll let you go. Or Dean? What, Kelly, what, you, yeah, you haven't said anything. Go yes. ahead. I don't want to take I'll a look. I, I, I strongly dislike, well, not the edge. I strongly dislike fire tokens. Um, and I can I can explain why. 
I feel as a survivor, not necessarily a purist, but as a survivor fan and a survivor player, like the whole point of the game is to vote out people who are not aligned with you, correct? Now, those people who are getting fire tokens, they were getting them from people who were voted out. So for example, Tony's there and he's doing what survivor people are supposed to do, voting out people who are going against him. Sophie, Kim, Nick, whoever, right? So he's not getting any fire tokens. And that's how it should be. So he's at a disadvantage. The only thing he got from Edge of Extinction was the extortion thing, which he was playing a beautiful game, could have ruined it and derailed it all. So I have a huge qualm to pick, or a huge bone to pick with the fire tokens. I dislike them very strongly. That just proves how great of a player he is, dude. With every disadvantage in the book, and he still came through doing uh, the OG way of playing Survivor, crushed it. Agreed. And then you have, like, Nick's example. He's just, like, sitting there praying, like, can someone please feed me something from the edge? Like, it, it became part of the game, and I, I wasn't a fan of it. I think also, this Edge of Extinction, sorry, just one thing. Again, it's not a knock on Natalie because she was incredible. But is it, does it seem right that a Jeremy or a Nick had zero chance to get an advantage, even though they last an incredibly long time in the game, but Natalie could rack up all these tokens, which allowed her to essentially gain advantages, which helped her get back in the game? Yeah, like, are you I being think, rewarded for being voted out first? Exactly. Yeah, I think that's a great point because it brings up pretty much, you know, you're almost better off getting voted out early, which that's not Survivor, you know, to me personally. And I think, you know, with the fire tokens in general, I was a little confused. Like, I was super excited to bring a new element to the game. And in the beginning, I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. But by the end, I was kind of waiting for something, some big thing to happen with them all. And then it was kind of just like, Jeff was like, oh, this is the last day to use them. So I think Denise had some extras, Michelle had some extras. And I was like, what are we going to do with those? It was kind of just like, I feel like tokens really was like a mechanism for Edge. And it's interesting because Jeff said the tokens are here to stay, but Edge is gone. So I but you can use, I, I think you can use it as a bartering system and also to tell who really is your ally. Because when Jeremy needed tokens, he went straight to Michelle. Michelle was like, yeah, I can hook you up. And then when Tony needed it, he talked to Ben about it. So it kind of creates like a bond where you are exchanging. It's like money in the real world. You know what I'm saying? So you, you kind of are creating a bond and realizing who is my true ally and who's not willing to work with me. Like if we're working together and you're not willing to give me a coin, I'm going to be like, why is she not helping me right now? So it kind of solidifies if we are in alliance or not. That's why I, I think, think you most, might keep it around. My problem with it, and I think perhaps most fans, is that fire tokens in this case were gifted to people, not necessarily earned from yeah. people. Um, and so imagine a, a, a game with fire tokens, but without edge. Perhaps you win tokens through winning challenges or something like that. In that case, then you're earning them and not give it, being gifted them. So perhaps it could work out. I agree with that. I think in the regular game where it's equal playing field that it might be okay. I would be all right with them. Yeah. And, and one thing I wanted to bring up, going back to Edge, something I was a little confused about was there was a scene at Tribal Council, like I think it was two episodes, Wendell had a beard comb. I was like, where? There we go. Let me take a look. Where did this comb from come from? Kelly, did you get beard combs while you were on edge? Where? Uh, I, I personally did not get a beard comb. I mean, I think I was doing okay. But, you know, I don't know. Um, I think he probably made it. He's like a, a master at making things, right? So he probably just took all his spare time and and uh, was making things out there. I don't know. That's crazy, though. I feel like every time Wendell's on the screen, there's no change. Okay. Jay has his own beard comb. I didn't, yeah. I didn't catch the beard comb, but did you guys catch the mirror? There was a mirror. Yes, a yes. I was like, these people are getting spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. But was, big, up, big up to them. They made like... I didn't catch the mirror. Balls. They painted a chessboard. They had a bench. They had like the ring game. Like, good for them. They were awesome. One thing I, um, I want to talk about players this season. You know, we had winners coming back. This was epic. You know, all former 20 winners. I want to know who surprised everyone the most. I'll start first. I'm going to go with Sarah Lucina. Um, the one thing with her is I always read the pregame interviews and I want to see like what people are saying before the game. Um, and as you can see, so many people, this was from Dalton Ross. He interviewed these players and asked, who do you want to vote out first going into the game? And so many people said Sarah Lucina. I think there was like six people. And yet she still made it so close to the end. So I'm just like extremely impressed by her. I don't want to give War Dog a shout out right now, but I was reading his tweets last night and he said something like, you know, if you play Survivor a thousand, like if any players played a thousand times, 
Sarah Lucina, you know, would get to the end the most. And I kind of agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Who, who surprised you guys the most? I think Sophie for me. I, I don't recall everything about her first season. I just remember that everyone kind of talks about it like it, it wasn't a great season. Um, maybe some people love it, but I think, feel like that's what most people say. And I thought she was really great. Like, it seemed like a lot of points she was running the game and making the decisions and keeping an alliance together and had strong bonds. So I thought she was really impressive. Who and what? Hey, Chillin. I got you. Um, who slash what surprised me the most was Ben's move or Ben's decision last night. I felt like leading up to this point, he was like relatively arrogant and cocky and like kind of being very mean to people. And then he flipped and just sacrificed himself to Sarah. I mean, he would have been in the final four. He could beat any of them in fi fire making most likely. And he basically gave up his spot in the final three. Perhaps something we could discuss further. Mm -hmm. well, I think maybe he did that because maybe he he didn't think he could win. And he was just like, yo, you have a better shot of winning. Plus, Ben, he's a good friend of mine. And he's like, he's a soldier, obviously. So to him, it's like, yo, as long as one of the teams, like one of us on the team wins, we're good. Yeah. So maybe he but gave up. Did it practice. actually benefit Sarah? Because if Ben stays, yeah. does Sarah have a better chance of going to the end? I know. Yeah, it's I don't know. And don't know. Ben, you know, he could have been the one that took Tony out and fired, you know. So it's. It was an interesting decision. Then it's almost like for Sarah, you know, taking out Ben could have kind of been her way to win. So they, that was her thinking. But it's also like if Ben is telling her to vote him out, like no it kind of takes that. away from it. And who knows what he would have told the edge people. So it's an yeah. interesting talking point. But uh, speaking of Sarah, once again, I think one powerful moment last night, you know, was her speech about the gender bias. Um, I really like that moment. She pretty much said, sorry, boys, uh, but, you know, women have disadvantages in this game. You know, if they cut, lie, steal, cheat, all of that, you know, it's they get hate for it. Whereas if guys do the same exact thing, you know, they're praised. So it was just super interesting. I mean, I also she said something about running seven marathons in seven days, which just blew my mind. I don't know. I can't even run one. So props to you, Sarah. Um, Kelly, as one of the few women who gets to go by their last name, Wentworth, how, how did you feel about her speech? Yeah, I think this topic comes up a lot. Like, it, people talk about it. Like, if a guy does all these crazy moves like Tony does and everyone just, like, praises Tony and it's, like, the greatest thing ever. But if a woman does it, they are seen in a different light or, um, you know, sometimes even with par people say like oh she was really flirty and that's kind of her thing now is like being mm -hmm. flirty but like why does that have to be her thing um so I, I was glad that it was brought up i was surprised that jeff was like oh i've always done that i'm like <laughs> oh I'm surprised that jeff's admitting that um so yeah hopefully it changes things in the future i think it could be interesting kind of moving forward um but mm -hmm. we'll see. and one thing uh elaine from my season always pointed out you know when it comes to sitting at tribal, women are always in the first row. And it's actually kind of a disadvantage. And Dean, it wasn't there a scene where like you and Tommy kind of switched the vote and it was because you were whispering to him because you were sitting in the back. But had you been in the front and people see that, you know. So it's a very good observation. Thank you. And shout out to <laughs> Elaine for observing that. Um, guys, we're going to take a quick trivia break. Everyone who's following along, let's see if you can get this right. Here we go. The correct answer was five i hope you got that right everyone if not it's okay i also you know want to talk about some other stuff now you know sandra a big talking point this season the only two-time winner at the start of this season you know got voted out blindsided by denise and ended up leaving edge of extinction jay what do you think about sandra dude i mean she's already won twice so she's like i got the money why do i need to suffer i'm out of here Forget it. <laughs> Worst case, they're gonna someone's gonna win and tie me two two crowns with my two crowns. So it's like, 
maybe we're going to need a third final battle to see who's the true king or queen of this show. Jay, or I mean, Dean? I think she was, I mean, it was a saving grace decision for her. She's not the Natalie. She's not the challenge beast. Like, she's a social threat, and she's most likely not going to win the challenge coming back from the edge. So I think in some people's eyes, perhaps the Boston Rob lovers, um, their perseverers, like it tarnished her reputation, but I think in, in some senses it saved her reputation as well. Kelly, any additional thoughts? Well, as someone who is on Edge of Extinction and looking around and I see a Joe and a Chris Underwood and an Eric and all these other people that I thought I didn't have a chance against, there were times I definitely thought about leaving as well because you just feel like the likelihood of me getting back, like why am I sitting here suffering and wasting away? Obviously, I have my own personal drive that made me stay, but for her, she's already won twice, like everyone already said. If she doesn't want to stay, she has nothing to prove. So people can think what they want, but she's won twice and already proven herself. Yeah, I, I couldn't say it better myself. Sandra, you're my girl, you know, if you had to quit, I mean, I don't really consider you quitting because, you know, Edge was kind of like a twist anyway, and you got voted out fair and square. So, you know, you, you had nothing to prove. You won twice. You really didn't have a shot on Edge. You admitted that. So you're just like, the peace <laughs> right, you're still a queen, Sandra, and one of my all-time favorite players. And speaking of favorites, back in February, I got to go to a special screening of the premiere. DK was there with me as well, and I got to interview some of the current uh, season 40 cast members in addition to Jeff Probst. Let's see some of their all-time favorite things related to Survivor. 20 years, 40 seasons, we want to know some of your all-time favorites. Are you ready? Favorite player? Tom Westman. Parvati. Wendell Holland, Ghost Island. No, 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 no. People know Jeremy Collins. He's, that's, that's the greatest. He's the greatest. Sue Hawk. Damn, I'm going to pick Wendell because he is one of my You favorites. know. Favorite player of my life. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? You're my not going to trap me with that. <laughs> favorite location? Fiji. That's where I've been twice. Kenya, Africa, I'm sorry. Samoa. Marquesas, the first, has a special memory and it was absolutely miserable. Fiji. Cook Island. Oh, Kenya, Africa. It's Australia for me. I mean, to be randomly sitting there at camp and I'll have a kangaroo just run right in front of you, who could forget that? That was awesome. Favorite twist? Uh, and hidden idols, immunity idols, heroes versus villains, I don't know. The first and original twist ever, Survivor Africa, the tribe swap. Favorite move that you've made in the game? playing my idol, taking it out of my bra. I would hate to go home with the idol in my bra. That was my favorite move because nobody thought I had an idol and I was supposedly so dumb that I could possibly not have an idol, you know, like. Tell him Robert to pick up his pieces. The devil idol play. Favorite winner? I'm gonna go old school, Richard Hatch, original winner, started the trend, uh, very, you know, I gotta respect that. Me. <laughs> I agree. Uh, John Cochran. Ben, his whole mission was I want other vets to see, look at me, I survived a lot here and here and everywhere, and it that really touched me. Me, no, Rob, Ethan, oh, Sandra, up. I don't know. Sandra Diaz Twine. Favorite reward? Uh, anytime there's pizza involved, I'm pretty happy. Ooh. Taco Tuesday, Ghost Island. My family visit when my dad came on Cook Islands was the best. Favorite Jeffism? Survivors ready? Go. Survivors ready? Go. 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. Want well, to know what you're playing for? I know what you're playing for. Yes. yes. You gotta dig. The tribe has spoken. I hope I never hear it. The tribe has spoken. All right, guys, we have some more shout outs from the viewers watching at home. Sammy Joe says, one of the best finales ever last night. Can't wait to see what they're going to do for 41, which we'll get to 41 in a little bit. Josie Steen says, Dean is my favorite ever. Got a cameo from him for my birthday. That yeah, boy. <laughs> All for you, Josie. Um, a quick question from, this is a long one, Patrick, 88162926, says, who do you think would have won in a Sarah, Tony, and Michelle final three? 
Kelly, start us off. That's so tough because we didn't get to hear Sarah's final tribal council tribal council thought speech questions, you know, answering what people would ask her. So I still think Tony would have taken it because he has a lot of good moves under his belt. I mean, he brought Jeremy in for a couple of votes and, and made a lot of, you know, clutch decisions. So I think Tony probably still takes it. It's, it's still Tony in my mind, too. I mean, think about it. Tony can say me and Sarah made every move together. Great. But I also won four challenges, found an immunity idol and dealt with the extortion advantage. Jay? I agree with them both 100%. What if I switched it up and said it was Sarah, Michelle, and Natalie? Oof. That's yeah. I'm giving it to Sarah. Only right. because Natalie, I think Natalie had to go to fire and win in mm -hmm. the fi final four fire to, to get more votes. So. I read, I actually read um, this morning Michelle's like post game interview. Um, and the talk of the town is that she was on the cusp of getting some votes. Uh, from the likes of Adam, Nick, Wendell, and perhaps some other folks. But those guys, if they had voted in the current situation, if they had voted for Michelle, then it would have been possible that Nadeg could have won. So they, despite wanting to vote for Michelle, voted for Tony to crown him the winner. And she yeah. was cool. So I don't know if, if Tony wasn't in it, maybe Michelle. By the way, I think Michelle earned a couple votes. Yeah, yeah I, want to, definitely. I want to talk about Michelle because I honestly think she is probably the greatest zero vote getter of all time. I also have some stats about her. So this has been going all around the survivor community. She's the only person in survivor history to play two times now and never be voted out. So she's got that with her. You know, she won two immunities this season. And again, like as much as Natalie deserved to come back, like she owned the edge game a hundred percent. Like I was really sad that Michelle didn't get any because I think she earned her spot. And, you know, it's interesting because her social game is amazing. And I think she's so underrated and so many people left her fire tokens. I, it was, I was surprised they didn't show that in her final tribal council speech. Maybe it got cut out, but um, yeah. Anyone have any additional things to say about Michelle? Okay. And I blew her up last night. I called her last night too, and I told her I I amped her up because I was like, "Yo, congratulations! You made it all the way." If this doesn't like solidify the fact in your mind that you are a great player, because I remember the first season, me and her talked, and she was like, "People th are saying like I didn't deserve my win, and I didn't do." And she was doubting herself, and I was like, "Yo, you shouldn't do that. Just trust me. Like you're a great player." And this time around, she made it to final three again. She was on the bottom the entire freaking time and still found a way through her social game to find like one crack. Okay, I got Natalie now. Let me use her. Let me use that. Like it was, she never gets voted out. So she's a great player. And it just sucks when you're going against like Tony and Sarah and Ben and you're the bottom. Like, dude, you're you're in deep, deep trouble. So. Dean, anything else? No, I just got to shout out Jay for still playing the game post Survivor, calling up everyone. <laughs> you know, I'll never go back, bro. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just calling people because, dude, it's like the winners at war season. Like, congratulations, you did it. You won once, you went back. Like, I, I just love spreading positivity and just amping people up at 2 a.m. And they're like, yo, dude, can I go sleep now? And I'm like, I'm so stoked. I love this show. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an interesting thing, though, about this final three again, I think it was the first time in. Since Korong, eight seasons ago, that there were two females in the final three. Um, so it's been a while, and Nat was actually, this is pretty sad, but the first female to get a vote in final tribal council since Chrissy in Heroes vs. Heroes vs. Heroes. Hill, what is that one? Heroes vs. Hustlers vs. Healers. Yeah, you know, it's, it's Healers, Hustlers, thing. Heroes, whatever. But yeah, so interesting final three. Um, I want to get into Adam a little bit. Uh, his epic idol play, just to preview everyone, I asked everyone ahead of time their favorite moment of the show, and we all unanimously said this move by Adam, you know, with the whole fake podium. Um, what do you guys think about this move? It was Pretty, like, you know, I think he thought he was going to get some hate, but it was really, honestly, my favorite thing of this entire season. Kelly? If it had worked, if it had been an idol, we all would have been on the couch 
like screaming so excited so it just happened to not be but you can't blame someone for trying he was going to do whatever he had to do he was going to be voted out so it's like that i think that was amazing i even sent him a message i'm like be proud of everything you did you went out like guns blazing that's the way that you play survivor dean what do you think yeah i mean my winner pick please. yeah your winner pick. I give it to him with perhaps the best moment of the season now one it was hilarious and two like any of us like if it worked like he was thinking on that level hence why he was my winner pick so props to him jay he's your boy dude <laughs> <laughs> be nice i loved it i loved it because number one even jeff was like adam you're trying to tug something off the podium that screwed to it and i was just like yeah, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I did that. And I love that he was just so open about it. He's like, God damn it. I'm just going to keep going with this joke right now because I'm, I'm a joke right now because <laughs> we <laughs> talked about it. It was great. And yeah, Dean, I'm still playing Survivor. Um, but anyways, <laughs> no, yeah. if, if he had it been, like Kelly said, like had it been an actual idol, he could have just literally changed the game. And it looks dumb right now, but I bet you in the future, if they put an idol in plain sight like that, someone might grab it now. And someone might actually have an idol in their hands right in their face and everyone was like open to it and they haven't used it. So it was a genius move. It just sucks that, you know, it, it, it didn't work. Yeah. And actually, we get to hear right now what Adam had to say about his epic, I don't want to say mistake, just epic move. Let's, let's hear what, is, what he says. I am a fan first, so I've been on Reddit and online survivor communities for many, many years, speculating about where the show might go, thinking about how I might play it if I were to get on. So it is funny that people sort of dug into my Reddit history and found this speculation that there might be an idol in the future. For Game Changers, Jeff came out and said there's going to be an idol at Tribal Council. We never got to it. I think people held on to their idols for too long. The first idols may require some work at camp to yes. find them. You might very likely find one in a challenge. Okay. You might find one at tribal council. <gasps> we don't know. It's been in the mix. It's something that's been talked about and it's been in international versions of Survivor as well. And it's the next evolution of the idol. I mean, you've had idols hidden at camp. You've had idols hidden at challenges. The only place that you haven't had an idol hidden yet is at tribal council. And what better time than the 40th season? So I really thought that this was the right time for an idol to come into the game where you would have to grab it in front of everyone at the time that you needed it most. Worth a shot. <laughs> So I had my eye on that thing from the second time I ever went to Tribal Council. Basically every Tribal Council after Denise found her idol and shared it with me and I saw that the symbol that it was in the shape of was the Fleur de Lis. And at every Tribal Council I was looking out for things that could potentially be an idol either now or down the line. I actually thought it might already be in play. Maybe somebody already had a clue for it but they weren't gonna grab it until they really needed it. So I thought maybe Maybe not only was I gonna get an idol, but I was also gonna steal an idol for so from somebody else. Add on to that, the buffs for every tribe had this symbol, the Fleur de Lis right there. This is the Decal buff, Fleur de Lis symbol right there. And at the time that I first figured it out, I was on the Sele tribe. And not only is the Fleur de Lis symbol on the buff, but it's also in the shape of the podium. I mean, come on. And from season 39, there was an idol clue on a buff. And in season six of the South African version of Survivor, which I watched, there was a, uh, an idol right in the podium, just like where I thought it was this time. So I really thought it could be something. When no one would talk to me, I knew I had to go and try to grab it because if it works, great. I stay another day and I can come back to camp and gun for Sarah again. Uh, and if not, then, you know, I still am, I would have gone home anyway. So it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot, always. I agree with Adam, you know, it was definitely worth a shot. Um, kind of like, it's interesting because you go back to that interview with Jeff at Game Changers and he said a tribal could be hidden at, uh, or a idol could be hidden at tribal council, excuse me. So I'm actually very surprised they didn't think to do that for 40. He's probably kicking himself right now. Dude, he, dude, that's the level that this kid is playing on. Like he never stops playing. 
It is insane. He knows every detail of every fact. Like, he's just talking, telling you details of every single season and every single buff and all this stuff. He doesn't stop. He's, he's, he's amazing at this game. It's crazy to me. But was at the same time, it was great that he failed because it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, guys. We have a couple other shout-outs. Ian DeBorha. I know that name. Tony wins no matter what. Okay. Vasance 100 says Tony and Sarah steal votes off each other. I think this is going back to our previous question about who would have won in a Tony, Sarah, Michelle final three. Matt Prisco says Michelle wasn't the only two-time player voted out. Michael Scoopin and Jenna Morosco also played twice and both were never voted out. But Scoopin, don't want to talk about him, but he fell in a fire and Jenna quit. So I consider Michelle the only one. And I'll leave it at that. Um, is there anything else? Tyler Austin says, love seeing Adam's old Reddit post and the old Jeff interview. That's right. We dig deep here at IMDb and we find out all of the info. <laughs> so, all right, enough about Adam. That, again, was everyone's favorite moment. But I want to talk about our second favorite moment. Kelly, why don't you start us off? Oh, sure. So I had a lot of favorite moments this season. I'm really excited to actually go back and watch the season again. Um, but my favorite moment was um, the Sandra blind side. I was just so impressed with the move from Denise. Obviously, Sandra didn't do herself any favors, but I just thought it was really impressive. You know, Sandra's the only two time winner and I've always been a fan of Denise. So I thought it was one of the greatest moves in the history of the show, actually. So I'm, I'm really happy that it kind of went down like that. Jay, do you have anything to add about that uh, epic Denise move? Oh, I loved it. It was incredible. But that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> that is about it. Why don't we go into your favorite moment? Remind me. <laughs> well, I believe it was something about Tony and Kim. So Kim started coming after Tony, and then Tony just found a way to completely get out of this vote and go right after her and flip the whole game again. And this guy, it's incredible because he never gets his name written even when everyone's gunning for him. I don't understand how he's this good. So if I could borrow his brain for like 10 seconds, I'd love to just dissect it. <laughs> right. Uh, I agree. You know, that move. Kim was also one of my all-time favorite players. So I was sad to see her go. But it was interesting, that tribal, you know, Tony, uh, was it Jeremy with that 50-50 flip coin? And then Tony almost played an idol for Sarah. It was crazy. He just was always, you know, orchestrating the votes. He's really a top dog of that Tony Vlachos. Um, the next favorite moment, Dean, let's talk about this. We can also actually listen to it. It's it's pretty hilarious. Talk us through it. Let me let me see what it is. Oh uh, yes. Oh my god. Yeah, the first of all, those Instagram takeovers that everyone can tell you one, right? Now like I didn't hear right. anything real. Is it on? Oh. Did I miss anything yet? Is it still on? I told him that was going to regret getting that peanut butter. Am I the only one that does survivor challenges at home? And I'm Jeremy. Get Ben. I'm not talking to you. Was the peanut butter worth it? <laughs> oh wait, it's ketchup. Bust Dude, he was hilarious. I was rolling on the floor laughing. Raffle, as they say. He had like 10 different wardrobe changes, one of which was my t-shirt that I gave him. He had Wendell there. He is absolute. that was absolutely hilarious. He wore his actual Survivor outfit in one of the clips there. Um, it was it was fantastic. But overall, all the um, Instagram takeovers, including Kelly's, were awesome. But Bryce's was one to remember. Yeah, Bryce, you went all out. I really appreciate that. Whoa, appreciate that. All the wardrobe changes. I was truly cracking up. I appreciate all the extra effort in that. Dean, when when is your CBS takeover happening? I don't know. Kelly, can you put me in touch with the correct people? <laughs> I don't know Listen, I, I, I received the news like less than 24 hours in advance. I, I didn't know if I was going to do it. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I don't know how much time Bryce had to plan, but I didn't have that much time. So I'm just saying. I don't know if I could, I definitely couldn't live up to Bryce's for sure, but um, I would have, maybe I would have to get you guys on or something or, or Jay dancing as he was pre-show. Um, <laughs> uh, another good CDS takeover, I believe was Hannah's. Um, she added some fun little, 
I'm not going to sing it for you. You know, the better be ready song, which brings up my favorite moment. Let's take a listen to this. You have to assume everybody's coming for you. It is a war. Here we go. When is a war? When is a war? When is it a war? When is a war? When is it a war? They're coming for you. For you. Yeah, almost so disturbed. <laughs> um, I really want to talk about this song. What do we all think of it? It was, you know, a little crazy um, to see that song. Oh, what is this, dude? <laughs> We're jumping ahead. We're still talking what? about the song. Don't look at that yet. Don't look. <laughs> Talk about the song. You're ruining my moment. Keep right. talking. No, okay. Let's talk about the Winners at War song, please. So I heard something that, well, first of all, this song was made for the show. Like, yeah. it wasn't, a sh they took a clip from it. And the way it happened was Jeff was in his car driving or something. And if anyone knows the story, please add. But he like was like, yo, we need an epic like entry song for this season. I'm thinking like a deep, raspy female voice with like a tribal undertone to it. And he like actually mumbled slash sung a couple tunes in his phone, sent that to his friend or someone on the show who then was like the manager of this female recording artist. And they made it based off his like voice memo. That he just randomly came up with the song, which is a crazy story. And I probably botched a couple details. Jeff Probst, such a game changer. Look at that. Jeff Probst is a game changer. And I think it was just, they would randomly play it throughout the season. Like in that moment, I just, like, I remember watching that and I was like, why are they playing this song during a challenge right now? You know, I liked when they would play, you know, going into tribal, but that challenge just really threw me for a loop. So my follow up question is, Kelly, would you add this song to your Spotify playlist? Uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, are you a fan? Um, I'm not adding it to my Spotify playlist, but like I get in weird like themed moods where I'll play like playlists of like Disney songs or something. And the other night someone sent me a TikTok of oh. this family who played the Survivor theme song, the original one, and were voting at voting people to who with post-it notes. For who within the family they want to do the dishes. I so saw, I saw that. That. <laughs> so I saw that. That was awesome, right? You know, literally though, I thought to myself, I was like, if I'm part of this family, I'm just gonna do the dishes. I'm not going through all this right now. <laughs> 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 all right, now that I uh talked about the song so much, we are gonna jump ahead to that game you guys just yeah, saw. Is this is called for everyone. Play along with us, use the hashtag I'm DB Live. What you're gonna have to do is we pretty much blended two survivor players together into one I love this. and we have to all try and guess about who the two people are so we'll just kind of yell out the answers again everyone play along with us let us know your guesses and let's play the survivor mashup we might have to be all scarred after this one. <laughs> yeah. that's okay oh, it's definitely okay, michelle. Is michelle and ethan is it nick is Michelle's it all beautiful but this is not her best look <laughs> Is it all Michelle is so hot right now? That's crazy. <laughs> I think Michelle is it. Chelsea, is it all people from this season? Yes. And I haven't said, oh, Michelle and Nick. Oh, Kelly. Wow. Point Kelly. All right, let's see who's next. This, this, this game just shows who shouldn't, like, end up with each other. <laughs> <laughs> that's what their baby will look like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that's Wendell and... Barb. Where do you see Parvati? It's those lips. <laughs> yeah. I have He's no like idea. Wendell's face on his own head, but off his own head. Yeah, it, that's what it looks like. Oh no, Danny. No, I have no idea. I could see it Wendell. Looks like Wendell. Wendell and Bryce. Oh, Jeremy. come on. All right, got that one wrong. Sorry, Wendell, that I kind of only thought that was you, but let's see what else we got. Dun 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 dun. So far, Kelly has one point. Oh! <laughs> Boston, Boston Robin, Rob, poverty. What? poverty. It's got to be. Poverty. Yeah, it is. That's it. Jay called it. That's it. Yeah. You? Robin Poverty? Yeah. yeah. 100%. Come on. Oh, so disturbing. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. 
<laughs> Thank God they never he got with Amber. Oh, oh the well, dream God. team. Oh Island of Idols too. Adam oh, can't God. split that up. Oh my God. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Man, that was really I'm I'm still shook. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Sophie and Sophie and Tony. Sophie Tony. and Tony. Oh my oh, God. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh. These kids are attractive, though. I saw them on the finale. That is not attractive. <laughs> Sophie, Sophie during the finale at Tribal Council, I was cracking up. All right, that I but I got so one right. So good. Yep, you did. I like this. Woo! I'm on the board. I'm on the board. Oh, that's all we got. Oh that's no! So <laughs> Can we get a Jay and Wentworth mashup? <laughs> one more no. mashup. Uh, let me mash up my face. All right. Um, we got some fan questions, I believe. Peter A. says, can Jeff please say, play Survivor one time? That'd be I don't sick. think that would happen. Yeah, that's not Sorry, right. Peter A. He's a host. Also. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Why don't you just yell at him? Sorry, <laughs> Peter A. He's a host. Marav, Marav fan says, would you like to see the auction back in Survivor? I missed the auction. I was hoping they would bring it back. And I think... For me personally, I think that would have been a great way to use the fire tokens this season, even with the leftovers that people had. Maybe just be like, oh, with your leftovers, you guys can bid on X, Y, Z. But don't, do don't the fire tokens, the fire tokens are kind of just like an auction all the time now, isn't it? I don't really know. They can buy idols whenever they, like, before challenges and stuff like that. Like, I think it's already just a constant auction with these fire tokens. Maybe. Yeah. What do I know? Let's see. Emmy Casti Castillo says Boston Rob is king. We have a big Boston Rob fan over there. Apparently not. Tony Vlachos won the game. Oh, <laughs> who said that? All right. Who, speaking of Tony, like who's on your guys now? Like Mount Rushmore. Tony. The, Mount Rushmore has a couple faces on it. Yeah, that's it. Just Tony. Tony's. Exactly. Just four Tonys. Four Tonys and one cent. Like, hello, <laughs> the queen. <laughs> Dean, what's your answer? I know Jeff, I know in your Google talk, didn't Jeff tell you his answer? Yeah, Jeff said, Jeff said Sandra, Rob, Parv, and Ben. And which, and this was um, right before the premiere. So I assumed Ben was going to win. I thought he like goofed up and was like foreshadowing. Um, but it's got to be Tony, Parv, sorry, Tony, Rob, Sandra, and Wentworth, obviously. Gotcha. Oh, we're over. Hey, chilling. Hey, Dean, did you notice how when she just covered her face, there's a huge diamond on her finger? <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. You guys are always just flipping me crap. It's fine. It's oh, fine. cover it. Cover it. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> stop. <laughs> uh, I, well, I was going to say that, Dean, it feels like you're still trying to game a little bit. You're getting on Jay for it, but look at you. Still going here. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the challenge now, but you don't got to worry about me. <laughs> but if Survivor, if you call me back. I think my Rushmore is going to be, we're going to get Boston Rob. We're going to get Sandra, Parvati, Tony. Yeah. And I, th I think I saw an interview where Parvati said uh, she would, I think a lot of them are saying they're oh. retired. Granted, when people say they're done, I feel like no one's ever really done. Um, she said she would come back to be a mentor with Tyson. Who IOI said? too. Who said that? Parvity. Oh, I like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Tyson's I think we awesome. also have a couple more fan questions. Let's see what we got. Oh, the real Lady Chop. Rank the uh. swing. Spy Nest, Spy Bunker, Spy Shack. Lady Chopsy, I'm loving that avatar. We have a chicken that looks like it's in a leather jacket. That's what I call swag. But back to your question. What do we guys think? Spy nest, spy bunker. What's the in third? In that ranking. What was that, yeah. Jay? In that ranking. As she, as she, whoever wrote it. Bunker yeah. is last. Because yeah, that, the bunker yeah. pretty much didn't work. For, that was game changers, right? Yeah, and he just kind of, kicked some sand around. He just pretty much laid in the ground, yeah. kicked some dirt around. Uh, yeah, yeah, the spy. Yeah, there we go. The spy nest was extremely funny this season. Actually, seemed like it really paid off i mean this last episode you saw him uh he overheard natalie telling sarah about the idol i was just i'm really surprised like no one figured out he was in there i'm surprised he could stay up there that long but you would think like 
with the cam I know you don't like when you're out there you forget cameras are there but I feel like I would be paying attention to like the camera tilting up I don't know maybe I'm overthinking it Dean I would it was amazing to see he and Sarah working together to pull it off but that was hilarious and for that reason I'm gonna rank it first because people had to expect like something going on with Tony and there he was sitting up in the tree for over an hour he said the one time <laughs> yeah. so he was and shaking bro he was shaking could you imagine him <laughs> and then you, you just hear the tree leaves like start shaking you're like what is up there right now what's going on <laughs> and he, he even used it in his uh final tribal council speech and it looked like the jury ate that up so good on tony we have another question coming up let's take a look ari botcher wants to know if you were a jury member who would you have voted for and why thank you ari for sending in another question you are our number one uh, fan and supporter so i appreciate that very much uh we may have already talked about this but remind us kelly who would you have voted for i think that they all were deserving for different reasons but at the end of the day i would have to go with tony 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 mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Tony, too. Final answer. Lock it in. Final. Give one to Michelle. Actually, Michelle, you get one. one yeah, from I do want to give Michelle a vote, though. Michelle. Yeah, I Are think we, she deserves second. Not to take any of it away, anything away from Natalie. Same. Yeah, I feel bad like, giving that. Yeah. Given your edge experience, but I'm kind of salty that Tony didn't get, like, all, I'm kind of salty she got some and not all Tony. Oh, yeah. Dean. Hot take. Okay. Dean with the hot. How do we, how do we feel about that? Uh, I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth <laughs> over here. Twitter fans, go against DK. I didn't see anything to do with it. <laughs> I'm more upset that Michelle didn't get any, and I understand you already kind of explained that some people were maybe going to vote for her and didn't because they thought then Tony may not win, but I do think that Michelle deserves some votes. So that was great. Yeah. And I hope she like feels really proud about her game. I haven't read her exit press yet, yeah. but like kind of what Dean was saying, it seems like she was a little like bummed out about her first win just with the backlash so she should no, be she was great. And proud she she killed it and to go in a season again with all these all-time greats and i've already mentioned this stat but she's now the only survivor to play twice and never be voted out it's pretty 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 good accomplishment um but i think we have another tweet let's see baby max can you guys comment on Jeff encouraging 16 to 19 year olds to apply? So I'm not going to read the rest of this. This is a long one. But basically, for those of you who weren't paying attention last night at the end of the finale, Jeff pretty much encouraged 16, 17, 18 and 19 year olds to apply. The age limit is 18. So why is he telling 16 year olds to apply? What is going on, guys? Are we going to see a survivor kid nation in the future? Kelly. I don't know. He also said if you have cool parents and cool teachers. So like, I don't know <laughs> what that cool means. Teachers? Like if parents gonna, versus you, kids? Like if, I don't get I think, it. I think he might have meant like they're to let them their kids go. I Jay, I know that's what he <laughs> meant, but I'm just saying, like, I don't understand. And I, I will tell you, I don't know if you guys, but today, like, my DMs are like, how, do you have any tips? I'm like, same. I got DMs. I can't. I can't. I didn't know. I, I, I can't. <laughs> I'm going to DM you right now. Yeah, for don't me, it's like, did you guys, when you were growing up, watch that show Endurance? Mm -mm. You don't no. know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like a survivor really thing. They did stuff with, like, rocks and water. It was like rock, paper, scissors, shoot. But it was actually really cool. It's like, I don't know what they're going to do with 16-year-olds. Um, they're going to do uh, TikToks. The other thing that was, because I think Jeff in the finale guaranteed a season in the fall. Doesn't, didn't he say, we're confident we'll see you guys back in the fall? Yeah. So I'm like, mm -hmm. is this why 16-year-olds applying? Are we doing Survivor Zoom airing on Prime? Yeah, Prime? that's what I was wondering. Like, is it going to be like this? Like, I can't imagine. Like, you're not going to starve 16-year-olds. Yeah, and what are they? Like, I don't know where they would film. Like, are we going to Survivor Atlanta for tax breaks? Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And just, and just, oh yeah, this is a hot take for everyone applying. I heard a. The casting website actually officially updated it, and they're now casting for season 43. So I have no idea really what's going on. They've already locked in 41 and 42. Nothing has filmed yet. That's that's all I know. So it's it's really interesting. I'm hoping everything works out with 41, but I don't I don't know when. If they can't film, they need to wait. 
don't don't do a survivor zoom please for the love yeah. of god don't especially do especially after 40 like you can't like this season was so good please yeah, don't like, just try and put something together to do it you're in exile you can't eat anymore okay i'm just gonna <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right. I think I have a couple more questions before we wrap up. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. We have. This is from the Chris White. If you could choose who in this Winners at War cast you would want to play alongside on day one, who would it be? Jay, start us off. You can play with Jeremy. anyone in this cast. I think Jeremy. Oh. Because he's a cool dude. So he's pretty chill. He plays the game smart. He's a really good player. He's also a challenge beast. So, like, at any moment, we could, like, start swapping necklaces and doing crazy stuff. So probably Jeremy. Kelly, who would you play with? You've already played with Jeremy. Mm-hmm. I would probably say Natalie again because I didn't play with her as long as I hope to in San Juan del Sur. And I think she showed her loyalty her first season and also this season. I know she didn't really have anywhere to go and, and was kind of forced to work with Michelle, but I felt like they were a really good duo for the time they were together. And I just think that um, she'd be fun to work with. Dean, what's your answer? I'm going with Mr. Velachos. I'm going with Tony for the reason of- He would destroy you, Dean. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> My whole game was predicated on like having a bigger threat as the shield. And I think, especially in a season like this, he's not the biggest threat because you have the Robs and the Pars, et cetera. But he's somewhere in the middle, still a shield for me. And I think I'd be smart enough to somehow get him out before like six or below. I think my answer, as like a typical fangirl, I'd probably say Parvati and like swoon over her. She was like my childhood idol, always looked up to her. Typical fangirl answer. I've actually met her before and she's lovely. So really like her. Let's see if we got any more questions. From Jake Walter 8, do you think we'll see any of these winners play again? I think some of the newer folks, the Knicks, Michelles, those kind of guys. But I think a lot of them had their retirement speeches last night as well. Yeah. Yeah. Is this, do you guys really think this is the last we've seen of Boston Rob in any capacity? Kelly, will we see Rob again? I think Rob would always say yes. So, I don't. I, if he's asked back, then we may see him again. I agree, but I think he's done. I mean, if you saw his Instagram this morning, he had like twelve Instagram <laughs> in a row. I, I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to be like, Rob, you can use the swipe feature and put this <laughs> all in one post. I love it. He's really nice, though. It's just a lot on my Instagram feed. But, but if it's the last season ever, like if it was like, okay, season fifty, it's for sure the last season, and Boston Rob gets called, you're telling me he doesn't go. That's a good point. He definitely go. Yeah, I think all these people who are saying like they're done, if it comes down to se- season fifty and it's the last season, I see these people coming back. No one's yeah. done. It's an addiction. <laughs> and if last, just got called. We'd all be like, "Yep, I'm, I'm ready." I'm like, oh, it's time to play. Uh, last uh, question: Where do you guys rank this season? Season forty. Is it in your top ten? Top five? Top three? Dean, start us off. It's my favorite ever. Wow. Really? Wow. You sound like Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really number one? Yeah. Okay. J- Jay, what are your I thoughts? Agree. I agree with Dean. It's the best. It's the best season ever. Mm-hmm. Kelly? Ever- okay. I-, I feel like everyone's just still on the high from last yeah. night. So I'm not going to go and say Let's the best season Let's keep it real, Kelly. Ever. I'll give it a top five for sure. But... I always enjoy watching a season on rewatch because I feel like I can really follow the story better than like week to week having to wait. So if I rewatch it and love it as much as I did, then then maybe it would be the best. Yeah, I'm going to have to say, honestly, my favorite season is Second Chance and then Heroes vs. Villains. This is definitely like, I think, top five, top ten. But, you know, Second Chance was really great, Kelly. Thank you. Talk about <laughs> playing the game right now. Talk about yeah, playing the game. Hey, Kelly, Second Chance was the best. <laughs> it was. There was the fan vote element. The gameplay was crazy. Like, it was just season 40. Love it. But, like, the boot order was a little disappointing. There were some editing things that, like, I didn't know about the whole, like, Michelle Wendell relationship. It, like, surprised me how he ended up going out. It didn't make sense. Like, I didn't know when Denise and Ben got super close. 
there was like certain things that I think were like left on the drawing room floor because Edge took up too much time. So season 40 is ranked number five, I'll give it. And that's really all we have time for, guys. So I just want to say thank you again to Kelly, to Dean, to Jay for joining us. Guys, let us know where season 40 ranks on your list. Be sure to use the hashtag IMDB Live and everyone. Just stay safe. I know it's a weird time right now. Wishing everyone the best and just, you know, social media can be a little cruel at times. Be nice to these season 40 players. We want them to stay on Twitter. My friend once told me it's nice to be nice. So let's be nice people. And thank you again for watching. And hopefully we'll see you guys soon. We're not sure when the next season of Survivor will air, but let's just enjoy what we got. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Uh, thank you.